I came across a startling realization the other day that I imagine a lot of you watching were fully aware of. I might be a bit of a Nintendo apologist. Well, not that bad, because I'm still aware of some of the bad things that this company does on a regular basis, but where I'll happily pile in on some of the mistakes that, say, Microsoft make, I tend to hold back a bit with Nintendo and revert to my default setting of praising the Nintendo Switch for being a groovy cool thing. And hey, it definitely is, and it's one of the most exciting chapters in Nintendo's history for a very long time, but I feel like I need to balance the scales a bit and spend at least a little while talking about some of the bad things that the Switch does. Not that I have to stretch too far when it comes to finding fault with Nintendo's latest bit of hardware since it's been four years and plenty of crap has floated to the surface for all to see and pretend to be surprised about. When was the last time Nintendo made anything that was genuinely perfect? I think most of us are Nintendo fans on this channel. I'd like to diversify my stuff up a little bit because I do play other games, but Nintendo is what I grew up with. So hopefully I can hit the right combination of complaining but constructive because the Switch has problems, it's just a case of Nintendo doing what they can to fix them. Or maybe they won't because the Nintendo Switch is making bank regardless. Wouldn't you rather make Super Bank though? It's honestly a little fascinating how much concerns over the Switch have changed over the last four years. The biggest worry straight out of the gate was the launch lineup and how Nintendo had to put big titles on this thing and quickly so as to avoid the kind of stagnation that plagued the Wii U for a good portion of its life, but all these years later, I think Nintendo have done well for themselves. There's enough character and quality in the games on this system that you'll likely find something to suit your taste regardless of genre or franchise. The same can't be said for everything else though, because of course there's more to a console than the games you play on it. I noticed this issue way back in 2017 while utterly grossed in Super Mario Odyssey with all its charm and colourful visuals and catchy music and then you hop back to the Switch's menu and... nothing. You've got incredibly characterful games dripping with personality, but as soon as you back out to the main menu it's like a sterile funeral and this might not sound like a big idea, but trust me it is. These things tend to add up. For a long time, people have clamoured for Nintendo to do something with the Switch's interface, whether it be something a little complex like game folders to help organise the very many games that may make up your collection, or something ridiculously easy like some fucking background music so that I've got something to listen to instead of my own invasive thoughts. It's bizarre that Nintendo haven't done anything with any of this over the past four years since music and folders were very prevalent with the Wii and the Wii U, and I distinctly remember Nintendo promoting a lot of different themes for the 3DS to help give your console that little dose of personalization. It doesn't make the console run better or improve any of the games you play on it, but a few small quality of life improvements would go a very long way towards stopping the Switch from feeling so lifeless outside of games. Plus, there's smaller issues like how there's no internet browser on the system, which isn't too much of a problem, but indicative of a wider issue that spreads to having no Netflix or other streaming apps, which feels like a massive missed opportunity. Nintendo was so concerned with the hardware and the games that they've completely missed out on the aesthetics. How do you go from the Wii shopping channel to... a library? That's not what people mean by their games library, come on. I don't really understand why Nintendo was so reluctant to do anything colourful or customisable with the Switch's interface beyond night mode, because their colourful design philosophy is incredibly prevalent with all the different styles of Joy-Cons and you can get the, the dock in loads of different styles, so I, I, just, I just don't know, honestly. Potentially they see it as not as big enough of a problem that, you know, not, no one actually cares about it. So clearly we need to be LOUDER! From a lot of different perspectives, the Switch is the culmination of years of innovation and creativity from the top minds at Nintendo, and ever since they decided to pursue innovation over like processing power and teraflops with the Wii, they've carved out their own little niche market that is doing really well for them. But is the Switch using all of its clever tech to the best of its abilities? No, that's, that's kind of why I'm here. 
Yes, it does feel strange to accuse the Switch of a lack of new ideas, but trust me, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Obviously, the big innovation of a hybrid console that can be played in handheld and in dock so it functions like a normal console is a massive selling point, since you can now take console quality games anywhere you like, but at some point, it seems like Nintendo decided that the Switch needed more features to make it a more exciting purchase. I have no issue whatsoever with added features, but it does create a tricky balancing act of ensuring that you're making the most of them. Them. Otherwise, it might just feel like you're wasting everyone's time, and by tacking useless features onto consoles that don't use them, everyone's money, too. So be careful what you cook up in the lab. The main offenders are the Switch's touchscreen and HD Rumble, which are both clever bits of innovation that are criminally underused by the vast majority of games on the system. Maybe it's all those years I spent with a Wii U gamepad or a DS in front of me, but I kind of assumed that the Switch would be using the touchscreen in a lot more places than in a handful of games that, admittedly, use touch controls in creative ways, but it feels like the forgotten innovation among all of Nintendo's creative ideas. Think about it, even the motion controls that the Wii introduced to be morphed and modified into something befitting a new Nintendo console. To be fair, the sporadic use of the Switch's touchscreen pales in comparison to the complete and utter waste of time that is HD Rumble, which you can roughly describe as the Joy-Cons vibrating in a particular variable way that matches the on-screen action. Again, there's a few games that make decent use of the feature, but the sad reality of HD Rumble is that no games have surpassed 1-2 Switch in that department, and that game is little more than a full-priced Wii Sports, a tech demo designed to show what the future could hold for this tech, but with room for improvements. The year is 2021, and no one wants to try. Throw a WarioWare my way, I reckon that'll do the trick. Did you know that Nintendo have a stick up their butts about emulation? I mean, I definitely get where they're coming from, and their stance of protecting their intellectual properties makes a lot of sense, but the ways in which Nintendo have stood against digital preservation and made it incredibly difficult for fans to play older games is really frustrating and increasingly hard to defend. Most of this would be solved if the Switch had some kind of virtual console attached to it, much like the similar equivalents on the Wii, Wii U, and 3DS. The Switch is surprisingly powerful, and if we're draining the Wii U's library until the dried husk of a video game console remains, I'm sure Nintendo could, at the very least, bring some GameCube games back for the ride. Hey, you could even charge people to play these older games and know how much you like doing that. Ah, but silly rabbit Luigi, Nintendo already has a virtual console on the Switch. You can pay a yearly fee to play a slowly expanding library of NES and SNES titles that stands at roughly 90 games that is at least satisfying to have at your disposal. If you fancy playing Super Metroid or Kirby's Adventure or even some SCAT, then you've got every chance to do so as part of Nintendo Switch Online. We'll talk about that in a moment, and why that's a poopy bad thing too, but I want to point out that all those previous consoles had virtual console libraries bursting at the seams with old video games. Every region had at least 200 virtual console titles, with Japanese Wiis having 659 games to choose from, and I think that goes to show the extent of how far the Switch has to go before it truly embraces the notion of a virtual console. This particularly feels like untapped potential, because the Switch's ability to take your game library with you wherever you go would give so much value to the idea of taking classic games from the N64 and GameCube eras on a long plane ride, but there's plenty of reasons to be pessimistic. The way in which Nintendo handled Mario's 35th anniversary with the release of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, a lazy, emulated collection of three classic Mario games that was taken down from the eShop as recently as the end of March? Yeah, that doesn't bode well. These games would have been perfect for a virtual console, but they were full-priced and temporary. Who needs to preserve digital media, eh? One day, many years from now, when smoke has filled the sky and the oceans have run dry, we will reach a stage where Nintendo have good online play. Yeah, I know, it sounds like a wild future, but I think if you give them long enough, Nintendo should be able to cobble together enough inches of copper cable to build some kind of functional online service. This is just the tip of the iceberg of Nintendo's reluctance to embrace modern gaming conventions that we take for granted, like voice chat and an easily accessible friending system, but the irony of Nintendo Switch Online is that it stumbles so much because it embraces modern conventions. Nintendo games have never been too amazing with Wi-Fi, but at least from the DS to the Wii U, you didn't have to pay anything extra for the privilege. 
It was never anything too special, but it was mostly functional, and besides, when it shit the bed, no one cared too much because we weren't paying to have it not work. You know, like driving a really shitty car. Back when Nintendo were first introducing Wi-Fi player to their video games, there was a freshness to it that kind of made the lack of refinement a bit irrelevant, because you could play Mario Kart DS with randos over the internet, and that was wild. Many years have passed since then, I think about at least about 15, and online players advanced to the point where we can look at what Nintendo are doing now and think, wow, they've just stood still. Again, this wouldn't be too terrible if Nintendo had genuinely changed nothing about their business model with online play. In fact, I wouldn't mind so much if Nintendo started charging money for online gaming if they had made any notable improvements in that time, as if they don't feel so bad asking for money because they put the time and effort in to bring their online servers up to code. Sadly, that isn't the case, and we're in a situation where Nintendo are charging £18 for a subpar online service that is miles behind their competitors. What's more is that online in general runs counter to Nintendo's typical design philosophy where, games like Splatoon notwithstanding, the focus is a single player experience with multiplayer being more of an afterthought. That would certainly explain why Nintendo treat the very concept of online play with indifference, but even then there's a fair heaping of gross incompetence over their failure to keep pace with what players expect. The majority of online play on the Switch is done with peer-to-peer -peer servers instead of dedicated servers, which just means that you're too reliant on your opponent's early learning center internet with too much lag to play a set of Mario Tennis. Listen, Nintendo has made a fuck ton of money from the Switch. Could they set aside at least some of that to help improve their online play? Hell, they're getting 18 of my pounds every year for their shitty servers. Maybe they could use some of that. I'm sure most people can work out where this is going from one hyphenated word. Joy-Con. That's still a weird name that I've never truly gotten over, but as part of the Switch's playful aesthetic it kinda works. Even though I rarely feel any joy when I have to rely on these things to do anything even slightly complicated. They're not terrible controllers by any means, since you can use them in a bunch of different configurations to suit your preferred playstyle, but the Joy-Cons hide a terrible ticking time bomb that will inevitably ruin your day. You may have heard of Joy-Con Drift, either from first-hand experience or from the many articles and angry comments online about the issue, which is where the analog sticks randomly drift in one direction and causes action on screen to follow suit. It's hard to tell exactly what causes this, with explanations ranging from dust getting under the rubber cap to general wear and tear causing the contact to fail, but just know that it can affect any Joy-Con, and most likely will at some point. The yellow pair that I got with arms are currently suffering from drift, so... That sucks. A fix is hard to come by, not least because of the lack of clarity over what is causing Joy-Con drift. You'd think that Nintendo would be able to offer some kind of explanation as to why their product is failing so reliably, but currently, all Nintendo are doing is offering free repairs if the controllers all within the 90 day warranty period. Considering it might be an issue caused by using the Joy-Cons for a long period of time, say longer than 90 days, your options are limited to paying Nintendo to fix them, attempting to do so yourself, or shelling out for a new controller potentially up to £70 for a new pair of Joy-Cons. It surprises me that Nintendo haven't offered any kind of extended warranty specifically for their faulty Joy-Cons, or announced some kind of widespread review of the tech behind the controllers because this is a big issue plaguing the Switch at the moment. Arguably the one thing I can happily highlight and say, yeah, that needs fixing as soon as possible. It doesn't matter what kind of amazing games you got coming up for the system, if my character is veering off to the side on his own, I'm not going to enjoy it. More like class action lawsuit con. This remember Luigi, and while we can sit here and be outraged at Nintendo's refusal to do anything about Joy-Con drift, it's worth mentioning that at some point in the next couple of years, Nintendo will attempt to launch some kind of Super Switch or the Switch Pro, and this is going to be a massive moment for them, but they have to fix Joy-Con drift in that time, because they can't steal all the headlines for their fantastic new system that costs more and does more, and still have Joy-Con drift. They've spent so much money, surely they can just spend a little bit more in their R&D department to just get some better materials to make their Joy-Cons a bit of a better product. You know, they can't afford to let this issue drift. <laughs> Ah!
Hi, just want to give a quick shout out to some of my top supporters on Patreon. We have Ramon Alberto, Jerome Kiryu, Fusion Warrior, Sarah Malion, Christopher Robinson, Joe Creamer, Scott Riker, Frank Giong, I think. I'm, I'm so sorry. The Green Scorpion and Devon Hutt. Thank you all for supporting what I do on YouTube, and if you want to join them, you can go to patreon.com forward slash rabbitluigi, where I post updates and behind the scenes stuff, and we generally have a really good time. Also, what topic would you like to see me cover next? Leave your suggestion in the comment on this video, because I'll be taking the best ideas and making a poll on my community tab, which you can then vote on to decide what the next video is about. I'll be announcing the winner of the poll over on my Twitter, so make sure you follow me so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.